President Trump did promise jobs, 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 and we've got millions of them now, along with a historically low national unemployment rate of 3.9 percent. But a key slice is missing from the overall economic pie that should deeply concern everybody, parents, college students, people who are looking for better paying jobs. With back to school season in full swing, the Bureau of Labor Statistics predicts that by the year 2022, there will be approximately one million open but unfilled STEM jobs, those in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and math. The problem is, while the U.S. produces 568,000 STEM graduates, check this, China churns out 4.7 million STEM grads. U.S. companies and their CEOs are desperate for this precise workforce, and yet they can't find them on the ground here in the U.S. Mark Vergnano is one of those CEOs. He's the CEO of Comores. This is the maker of Teflon and other chemical products. And, and you are desperate for STEM programs to blossom here in the U.S., right? Oh, absolutely, Liz. I mean, as you said, a million jobs between now and 2022 from a standpoint of you know, we need those those students who are going to be workers going forward, and that's uh, critical for us to be able to survive. That's 2x the number of non-STEM related jobs that are going to be developed here. Why are we so unprepared for a workforce that gets paid better than retail and all these other jobs that are out there? No, it's a good question. And we started something at Comores called the Future of Chemistry Scholarship to try to entice students to want to get into the chemical field. We're moving our R&D center on the campus of the University of Delaware so that we can bring students in directly and work with us at each day. So these are things you have to try to drive people to come into chemistry. I mean, look at these these average salaries. The average STEM salary is around $55,000, and that compares to 40505 or 26% less uh, for non-STEM, similarly educated, college-educated people. Why? Okay. But how do you get the, the K through 12? And I can remember hearing the great Craig Barrett of Intel give a speech saying put everything into K through 12 STEM. I think it was before the, the term STEM was even there. It was back in the late 90s that I heard him speak. He said, let's go for the jobs of the 21st century versus the 20th century. Why are we propping up? You know, obviously we have to eat, but farming sort of last millennial millennium. How do we do that? Because public schools can't seem to match the task. No, it's a, it's a great question. I think you need companies to make it very clear where the jobs are going. And so that not just people can have jobs, but they're going to have great jobs. So our job is to intercept that at the middle school area, at the high school area, earlier in someone's educational life. You can't wait till they get to college to really get someone excited and, and focused on STEM. The other side of this is there's still only 20 to 40 percent women in STEM. We want the rest of the world's 50 percent women. Why can't we get 50 percent women in STEM? And that's something we're trying to drive at the same time. I got to tell you, you get a lot of girls in school. I was one of them. I'm just not good in math. I don't even understand what engineering is. Oh, I don't I, I like science, but it's not interesting to me the way it is taught. So what do you do about that? It's about science, right? It's exciting people about science. Mm -hmm. And it can be something that ties into something that people are excited about. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the environment is something that many young kids really enjoy to, to, to benefit from, right? They, they want a good environment. You were talking to the administrator just a few minutes ago. Of the EPA. Yes. So you think about products like our Option, our refrigerant product for Comores, you know, that gets into uh, refrigeration both on uh, stationary as well as automobiles, low global warming potential, but it's manufactured here in the U.S. and it creates jobs. It'll be 150,000 jobs created because of this. Uh, Name that new chemical, chemical again, that Option. element? It's Option, uh, which, again, the Kigali Agreement, which uh, you and I were talking a few minutes ago about, is really an amendment to the Montreal Protocol to really drive it into the U.S. It makes U.S. win because you're going to have mm -hmm. more jobs here. You're going to have two companies, Honeywell and Comores, who developed this product, who manufactured here yeah. in the U.S. So you can tie science into something that's good for the environment and good for business at the same time. Advise graduates of eighth or let's say 12th grade going into college, what major would you best suggest they declare? Uh, you know, engineering. <laughs> uh, no, I'm a nerd. I'm an engineer. But, you know, I told the same thing to my nephew, mm -hmm. you know, and he had three job offers when he came out of college. Wow. 
that's and they were great job offers so you know engineering is a great place but there's a lot of science related uh, uh, mm -hmm. disciplines it doesn't just have to be an engineer as you said you didn't know what engineering was but chemistry math biology these are all areas that we're going to need in the future you worried about the tariffs a lot of chemicals are mentioned on that 200 page uh, book of tariffs that uh, the, the Trump administration would like to slap on <laughs> incoming Chinese uh, elements the, the, you know, from our standpoint, um, I know that the administration is trying to create a level playing field yeah. from that standpoint. There's ways to do that. As I mentioned, the Kigali Agreement's another way to be able to do that, where you can actually do something good for business and good for the environment and good for the U.S. at the same time. So how you do tariffs, I think, is very important. Mark Vergnano. I would listen to you if you were my chemistry teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Right? Great to have you. And Camorras. Thanks. Thank you very much.